Hey there YouTube, Travis here. I'll open this video with a quick apology. Um, I know everybody is waiting to see all the footage from Pinball Run. Uh, Will, I, and Anna, our teammate, we had an excellent time and I promise all that is coming. It's just about eight hours of footage and I'm working as hard as I can to get it edited. In the meantime, I thought I'd treat you guys to something special here. So we're gonna take a look at all of the parts that we roasted on Pinball Run. Again, this is a 1,700 mile trip from Seattle to San Diego, and oh boy, <laughs> we quickly found out, you know, what you can and can't get away with with pushing an old moped this hard with these many crazy aftermarket parts on it. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to kick it off with what I think might be the scariest part I'm going to show you today. Uh, these are rear mag wheels for Kreidler mopeds. The one on the right we were running during pinball run. The one on the left is its replacement and I'm going to show you exactly why. First let's take a look at the replacement wheel. Here's what a sprocket is supposed to look like. Look at all those nice teeth. I'll show you a couple other things on here. Uh, the bearing seat is nice and solid. This is the free wheel on the other side for the pedals. Listen to that. That's wonderful. Okay so here's our wheel. <laughs> So when your sprockets start to look like chocolate chips, it's absolutely time to replace the sprocket. Um, I'll show a quick picture of what the wheel looked like on July 22nd when we first realized it was starting to get this worn down. Uh, it looked pretty normal before we left Seattle. Um, and we had running a tight-ish chain. I didn't think it was that big a deal, but then again I was thinking in terms of, you know, this bike is going to be ridden you know, maybe 10 or 20 miles a day, not 250. Um, I recently took the bolts out. Um, those were in there for pinball run, I promise. <laughs> but uh, this is pretty scary. Uh, we realized this and we didn't have much choice other than to press on. And this, these have really gotten worn down. And there's one over down here. Yeah, this one broke off. Um, this is bad. Um, I mean, it's getting to the point where the sprocket is going to stop being a sprocket and just going to be a flat circle, and the chain's not really going to want to stay on that. So, you know, not not a huge deal. Uh, you just replace the sprocket and run a properly tightened chain. No big deal. Here's the bearing seat. This is what concerns me a little bit, are all these cracks in it all along here. Uh, this is not good. Um... Also, when I pulled the axle out, as you can tell, this is a sealed bearing axle. This one plopped out the first time, which is a little unnerving considering I had to, to install it with a hammer uh, before. So that alone is enough to make me want to pitch this wheel. And something else that happened, the freewheel locked up on me for the pedal chain. Uh, so my pedals just started going thunk, 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 thunk as my feet tried to stay on them. So in conclusion, I consider the wheel on the right ready to be mounted on the wall for the trophy that it is. Alright, so I'm going to quickly change gears here. We're going to talk about some stuff that we broke, but eh, it wasn't really roasted. Bottom end seal on our stator side right here. This is a double lipped seal for those of you who might inquire about it. Uh, it started leaking on day one, and so we had to swap out our motors on the very first day. A little disconcerting, but not a big deal. Something I am pretty proud of is while we never seized, we never, you know, seized our nice Treats Reed kit. Um, we did swap the piston out in San Luis Obispo. Piston is in fine shape as you can see considering the fact we were not running a temp gauge. Uh, we ripped it off on the first day out of frustration, but you'll learn more about that in the main video. But the motor was making a knocking sound and the piston looked great. The needle bearing still had all needles and still felt fine. The wrist pin was, seemed to be just fine. Um, I had a whole spare piston, wrist pin, and needle bearing and, and C-clips and all that fun stuff. Um, so we swapped it out and the knocking stopped. I just wonder if maybe somehow, you know, the stuff just all just got just a little worn and, and was just giving us a little bit of play right there. But, uh, you know, not necessarily a roasted part, but... Uh, something we had to swap out. Here's our exhaust gasket, well one of many. Every single exhaust gasket we tried, it would blow it out right here. This is the back side. 
and made the bike loud, but it didn't really affect how it ran. Um, and every single person we talked to said, oh, I bet your, I bet the header on the pipe is just bent because you tightened the two nuts too much. And we took it all off, and it was flat. The mating surface and the cylinders perfectly fine. There wasn't any old gasket up there, and it just kept blowing out every single gasket we put in there. So I said, all right, well, I guess we'll just run it. So we did. Now here's the most perplexing part. So we were running these single pedal reeds, and... We just had issues with these carbon fiber reeds, and I don't know if I can get it on camera that well right here, but uh, let me get the light on the camera. Maybe we'll get a better look at it. Yeah, they would just break. <laughs> this was day one. Uh, these reeds broke like this. Uh, the next day, we did okay, and then the third day, uh, our reeds broke like this. So this actually stranded us in Coos Bay, Oregon. Uh, I went to two auto parts stores, a chainsaw shop, where I was told, we don't do much two-strokes anymore. <laughs> and then I went to an ATV store, and a kindly older gentleman uh, located a used set of fiberglass-style reed material. And uh, that was able to get us the rest of the way, which was great. I just... I'm just kind of perplexed as to how they'd fail like this, but uh, I get, it might just be a limitation of the design. I'm going to try and get my hands on a nice set of V-block reeds. But that was that. Okay, so now for the one part in this pile that probably deserves a roasted designation is this stock E50 clutch. Uh, well, not technically stock. It had kickstart springs in it. But, uh, oh boy. Okay, so... There is normally supposed to be friction material here uh, at the top of the clutch. Let me show you the other side. There, there really is, um, but there is just nothing. It is down to the bare metal. Um, this is, <laughs> this is, this is real bad. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, so here's the crazy part. Uh, this was running, um, and we got to a huge hill. And Will was on the bike, and all of a sudden it just stopped. The motor would rev and rev and rev and nothing. And uh, here's the clutch bell. Of course, we were running Type F because it is a moped. Uh, it was black as night when we drained it out. And the smell, even the smell coming from this bag where I have the parts, is just kind of, it's a little overwhelming. Uh, There's just burning smell. And uh, this was after 800 miles. Uh, this clutch looked brand new before that. And you might remember from some of my other videos, talking about running a lightened clutch bell with a roller bearing and a treats jammer clutch and we totally did that um, that was in our original motor and when we threw our backup motor on it just had this clutch in it so on the side of the road we we ripped these parts out and we installed our aftermarket performance clutch and our uh, modified clutch bell and away we went uh, well not necessarily Will broke a screwdriver trying to get the brass bushing off the crank after it was stuck there, which was, of course, one of the reasons we were, wanted to run a roller bearing clutch bell in the first place. But I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa. this clutch, <laughs> this is easily what I'm most proud of. This is going to get turned into a piece of artwork somewhere. Um, I mean, this thing, wow. <laughs> I mean, it's it's all sorts of messed up. Everything is just is just trashed on it. So, I'm proud of it. Um, I mean, it it performed pretty great up until the the very end. All right, there, YouTube. I thought that was kind of a fun topic to explore. I just wish I could show you some more content right now. I promise, I'm working on editing this massive video. Being able to do updates on the road during pinball was a pretty funny joke I told. Uh, we barely had time to eat and sleep. It was so crazy. But a wonderful adventure. So, stay tuned YouTube, and until next time.